that's it. We're live. It's been a while. We had the holidays in there in between. And, you know, you don't take any breaks. You don't take any time off. But we're back with Black Jaded Wolf Uncaged, our sixth episode of this. I'm excited because I know that you went to Hawaii, but then really went to a luxurious location in Westchester. Forget about Hawaii. I mean, you know, you went to the glorious and lush and beautiful Westchester, New York. And that's the real, that's the real. I missed uh, you there this weekend, you know. A lot of stuff, you know, I had some had some other things to do. I really would have liked to have gone. You know, George Gervin was there, something yeah. which would have been cool, a little Iceman. And, uh, you know, I wore a shirt. I talked about it on an episode this week. Uh, Leave the gun, take the cannolis. That guy, John Martino, the guy who got shot. Yeah. And they he left was the... actually uh, sitting in front of me the whole weekend. So See, that's... I would have had him sign my, my shirt. Hopefully he's there again. I got, the I got the shirt. I'll get a signature and hang out. Yeah, I'm sure there's not a lot me. of people who even know who he is. You should have told me. Yeah, we'll figure it out. You know, that's that's more my shtick. Everybody's over there for Pete Alonzo. I'm gonna go hang out with the guy who's in the Godfather. Everyone you know? was there for Pete Alonzo. So listen, we'll go in chronological order because it's our yep. first one of these for the year. You went to Hawaii. Tell us about that. What kind of show was it? I'm sure you had fun in Hawaii, not just at the show, yeah. but talk about that. No, nah, it was a fun. Obviously, anytime you go to Hawaii, it's fun. Uh it was a long trip, <laughs> it's eleven hours, but <laughs> but uh the show was very good in my it's not about just the sale i think the show has a lot of uh, upside and prospect to it because it's it's like eight hours away from some of the asian countries you mm -hmm. know and uh, um eight hours away from cali from the east coast you know so, so you see a different people. market different people there yes definitely there. and so the funny part is they didn't attack or invited a lot of sports cards but uh, Rod's card is there. I was there, and I obviously in, invited some of my crew. I asked uh, David Adams to be there, you know, so they were all there. Uh, the funny part is Adam was actually vacationing that weekend anyway in Hawaii, so he was there. Uh, and then some of the local, like, big collector in Hawaii were set up, you know. So it's only a small group of, like, sports card collectors, mm -hmm. but there was a lot of true collectors, that was the fun part that's so different from all the shows I've been going through. Remember we had that talk about me liking New York Comic Con mm -hmm. experience? Yep. So it's kind of like that, but more knowledgeable uh, when it comes to so, sports stuff. So let's push that out a little bit because, mm -hmm. I mean, maybe we'll have to do a comparison because let, this past weekend was Dallas. You weren't there. Nope. But you've called the Dallas show more like a flipping show, and you say this show is more geared towards collectors. What does that mean? So is, is people there who are looking for, like, Grail-type of cards? Well, people not, there who are everyone trades? Is on, not everyone is on their phone. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> They're literally not checking, you know, your comps, your what are what's, you know, what's the good thing to buy now and maybe put it up on eBay or flip it and stuff like that. Literally, if people, like, oh, they see a sticker of, like, 100 bucks they'll pay you a hundred bucks or maybe ask you like a five dollar off or something you know mm -hmm. then and there's also a lot of uh there's definitely a big increase in non-sports stuff so okay a so big that's increase. two things number one mm -hmm. you've heard it here first folks why sharon mm -hmm. likes collectors better than flippers is no negotiation skills <laughs> I put my price tag out and they're going to pay it. Um, as long as you're fair, you know, you, you know what I mean. <laughs> of course. I'm just giving you a hard time. Mm -hmm. But no, but I mean, it, there is that because obviously if your goal is to flip it, it's to take it over your table and walk to someone else's table and try to sell it there or to walk to a, an empty spot, take a picture of it and try to put it up on whatnot. Yeah. Or, you know, on your Instagram story and say, hey, I got this card and how much, you know, mm -hmm. I, I try to flip it right there. Then, the, you know, the haggling comes in because, you know, you get 5, 10, 15 percent off of what the sticker is on it. You know, that that could be your profit margin on flipping mm -hmm. that card that week. Um, you know, I, I get that. But then the fun part you talk about is non-sport. So, mm -hmm. I mean, is that the basis of the show? Because obviously they didn't invite a lot of it's, sports it's people. A mix. What kind of so show is tons it? Of, tons of uh, Pokemon. Mm -hmm. But there's also a big selling of like um let's say star wars autograph uh okay. uh tons i sold like a bunch of game of thrones autograph wow um, okay yeah and I, i'm gonna be honest with you i have some really rare stuff on those yeah you told me you so, have like a whole set of them i remember yeah, you, you told us about that so That's i didn't cool. expect it but i almost got cleaned out on those stuff yeah and wow. you know yeah was so it all Daenerys or just like you know random people did you have like you know random did you have people. the mountain uh, well, random people, and then a couple of dealers starting to like buy them too. Okay. 
So I think the next few show, you're going to see a bunch more of those things, you know, like, you know, if you see Iron Man, you know, um, that type of stuff, you know, Captain America autographs and stuff like that. Like the, the actors, Chris Evans, you know. Oh, that's cool. Is that yeah. because they're in new products or just people are starting to pick those no, up? No, the older just... stuff. It seems like it's, like it's Rittenhouse? our generation when we're like 40 something and we could mm -hmm. afford, you know, to buy sports card and non sports card. It seems like it's just, oh, I saw this in a movie and I love this actor. Now let's buy it, you know, that sort of thing. That's cool. I mean, that, yeah, that's easy. That's easy stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so you had a whole bunch of people buying non-sport cards and you had Pokemon. Talk about the Pokemon. That that seems to be, you know, strong. Yeah. Um, you know, I see people pushing for Pokemon all over the place. I see businesses trying to you know, make inroads into Pokemon. You see PSA puts out their monthly reports and they talk about how much, yeah. just how much Pokemon is being graded. I know the other grading companies want to start to try to, you know, pick up more Pokemon grading. Yeah. Um you know, and you can see that. That's why p companies are giving discount on grading TCGs right now. And so you can see that they're they're increasing. So Pokemon people don't want graded stuff before. But for some reason now, it's like, why are you going to spend this money on the roll when you can spend five, five bucks or ten bucks more to get a graded already, you know, graded version? So there are more of those now. So... I don't Interesting. Know. Yeah, so more collector like they want to preserve their their investment, or you know, I don't know why, but they seem to like it more in encapsulating it now. I mean, have you seen more people who were sports kind of also bleeding into TCG? You know, see like younger kid, you know, uh, you know, people who might have been flipping, or they, you know, they could still flip, but they maybe maybe Pokemon becomes sort of like a a, a collection for them. Some, not all, but there are some. That's definitely like, cause you want to be different. Everybody's carrying the same thing, you know? Yeah. So that's, that's always been my goal since I started this business. You know, I started in baseball and then when everybody's just doing baseball prospecting, I jumped to another thing, you know? So right now, and last year, it's like everybody's into football and basketball. So people jump into F1 and then soccer, you know, now world cup is over and you could see people are starting to put some women's world cup out, you know, cause it's 2023. And mm -hmm. then you could also see some a lot more Pokemon than before in shows. I'm it's funny. I mean, you know, let's think about that for a second because it's something probably the average collector or person listening to this doesn't think about, right? You know, we, we have this show because we want to talk about, you know, what you see at shows, mm -hmm. what you see at, you know, what you're expecting to see at shows coming up, but then also the life of a dealer. And, you know, what I just heard is if you're out there going to shows, if you're out there trying to, you know, do business, you're out there trying to, you know, separate your table from somebody else's, you can't just put out the same cards that everybody else has. And it may not even just be the same cards. You you have to pivot to another sport. And is that possibly some of the reason why we see, you know, the popularity of these cards kind of, you know, just come out of nowhere also? You mentioned F1. Like F1, I remember being at the National and everybody, oh, F1, F1. And that, yeah. that, but then it moves to something else. Is it part of it because dealers are trying to make their table a little more unique also? Yeah, and it's also the hype, you know, what are young kids and sneakers and, you know, I mean, F1 to me is a different situation because it, it's about the clothing, it's about the name brand, and it ties into F1, you know. The bigger name brand, Prada, you know, all those expensive stuff ties into it. So I feel like that's what entices the younger generation to kind of do F1. So but I have I'm a question. About, Shoot, please, sorry. But I'm talking about soccer and other stuff is more like what's going on. People are predicting what's going to be possibly what tournament is coming up the next few months, you know. So there's a big Japanese like uh, Pokemon thing going on mm -hmm. this year. Uh, there's even a big thing in Japan that I'm thinking of going. So Do you try to buy the trophy cards at the end when yeah. it's done? Are you going to start, you know, uh, bags of cash with you and just buy the trophy cards? That's awesome. <laughs> Those are expensive. <laughs> it happens. It happens that people do that. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty crazy. So I have a question for you because you went to two shows already in two weekends of of uh, of the new year. You didn't yep. go to Dallas, but you went obviously to White Plains. We'll talk about that one in a second. But just overall, you know, the concern I think that was out there for 2023 was that there are too many shows. And already, you know, you had to make a decision and I want to get into that in a second, you know, how you decided and what the story is. But too many shows and, you know, the market kind of not being where everybody would hope it would be. And, you know, some of the shows people were worried about, it. you know, is it going to be enough foot traffic? Is it going to be good for dealers? Is it, you know, are we going to start seeing some of these shows that opened up in the last year or two, maybe start to close down or consolidate or join forces mm -hmm. and that kind of stuff? Did you see anything in your first two weekends, your first two shows that kind of led you to believe, wow, we might be in trouble? 
or were they crowded and robust and business going on? So it's very crowded, both shows. Um, I heard the, the same. Only, yeah, it's very crowded. The attendance is not the problem. Mm -hmm. I think there's less people that are spending more than like buying bigger cards. Okay. So, and if they want big cards, but there are smarter collectors that they're bringing their $500 to $1,000 card. Like I told you in our first episode that they're trading up for, because collectors want the big cards to keep. Right. You know, the flippers don't want the big card because they're not easy to move right now. Right. But, so a lot of people are trading, like they, you know, I traded like a big, um, two shows, Hawaii and this weekend, traded some bigger, like $10,000 cards for, a bunch of more liquid stuff. Okay. So I did that, but they're not like five dollar card, ten dollar. These are like still five hundred to two thousand dollar card that I traded for. But and I it gave used them to like be a ten thousand dollar card. Mm -hmm. You could see somebody coming in and buying that ten thousand dollar card, or trading, you know, a ten thousand or twelve thousand for a ten thousand. But now you're seeing, you know, that the only way that ten thousand dollar card is going to move really is. If you're willing to take, let's call it 20 cards that are worth 500 each and then mm -hmm. spend your time moving those 20 cards, that'll get you to the 10,000 instead of making that one $10,000 sale. Yes. So it, 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 it takes a little bit more brain cell, <laughs> obviously, <laughs> and some patience. But to me, even if I if I traded a $10,000, $20,000 card, it's still, to me, it's moving, basically. It yep. It's just, and actually, I'm very, more hopeful because it's true collectors that are getting those cards. Yep. They're not flippers. So they're saying we're trying to liquidate the stuff, even though they're liquid, the, the five to a thousand dollar card, but they're not might not be good long term investment in their opinion. So it's something you wouldn't see a flipper doing because they'd be taking liquid cards and moving them into illiquid. But a collector is mm -hmm. doing it because they don't care that the bigger card is illiquid yes. because they're not planning on moving it. Yes. So they're thinking of holding it maybe, let's say for a Tatum or a Luca. They think these two kids are great. It's just the market is horrible right now. Mm -hmm. And if they hold on to them for two years, when Luca or Tatum wins a championship, more Tatum, but uh, and then Luca might win an MVP, they're hoping that those cards, even though they trade up for it, I mean, hopefully those will go up in the next two years when the economy is a little bit better. And what's funny is I think the, the side effect of that is the price will go up because there's going to be less of those on the market because now collectors yes. are getting them in their PCs yes. at this price range mm -hmm. and there's less of them out there. But that's very up. good. To me, you know, collectors should get some of those cards right now. You know, uh, you know, I, I'm telling if, if you're if you're extra money, you know, I mean, it's something you should get into, if especially at a good price. Obviously, so I love this last two minutes. And guys, if you didn't listen to this one, go back just for you know for a second, replay it because I put out there a little hashtags, you know, show your PC in 23. You know, the hobby's alive, the hobby will be fine, and you know, we have mm -hmm. all that stuff. You know, um, you know, there are plenty of people who do that. Hey, look at the hobby. What's funny is what Shannon just talked about is exactly why the hobby will be fine, but but it's fine for people who have a little bit of patience, yeah. And what, what I think you know. And I hope you get out of the episodes here is, you know, I'm getting to chat with somebody. You're getting to listen to somebody talk who's been doing this for several years since before the boom and bust that we had during COVID in the last couple of years has seen the cycles and has patience because of that. This is your business. You know, you see how stuff moves. Even to say something like when I trade something, I consider that moving it. I consider that it's moved because now you're going to be able to, you probably, even if you don't sell all 20 of those $500 cards, you're going to sell some of them. It's better than just sitting with that $10,000 card that you're not moving. Mm -hmm more important piece of it is kind of the flip over of the market i mean you're going to a show and it's not just guys i got a ten thousand here's ten thousand let's move to a different table and then let's flip them do a whole deal if the if the ultimate you know conclusion is that that ten thousand dollar card or eight thousand dollar card it leaves goes home with somebody whose intention yep. is to sit that on their counter to yep. show it to their friends and to hold it for when tatum wins a championship in 2025 mm -hmm. that's healthy <laughs> You know what I mean? Yep. That's very healthy. That's healthy for pricing. Now it's healthy yep. for long-term pricing because it takes that supply off the market. I like it. It's good stuff. It's good to hear that that's what's going on at shows. No, I'm very excited. So I actually think I'm a little hopeful and the crowd is just good right now. You know, there's tons of people still buying and stuff like that. So, so in the beginning, so last time we talked right before Christmas, 
the kind of deal flow you saw at shows were the hundred dollar Tatum, the eighty five dollar Luca, the PSA ten that you know people put in a slab, maybe a hoops premium. That's not going to be you know something that's going to set the world on fire, but it was a Christmas gift. You saw hundred dollar buyers at tables and stuff like that. And now we're past that Christmas to mm -hmm. holiday buying. Was it still kind of the same kind of cards, or did you see a kind of shift now towards what was the average kind of buy? There was a lot of those two. So it's not in. There's also some in Hawaii, but. So I in New York, I bring a lot of smaller stuff because I know there's a lot of young kids there. Mm -hmm. There's tons of kids that's like happy to buy a PSA 10, uh, De'Aaron Fox for $40, you know, for $50 rookie PSA 10 of Jalen Brown or, you know, something like that. So and they're so happy running that back to their parents and like, look, I got a De'Aaron Fox, you know. And Good. he's like, and then he's screaming, this is my favorite boot. You know, it was just funny. <laughs> See, so it's like well, that's good. They're thing. gonna come back. It, it, yeah, and he brought his brother, who spent some money too. So you know, that, but that's the thing. It's it was fun to see that, and but there's also people who's literally like bought maxi. I was starting to get worried. I have tons of maxi the past few months that I picked up, and I sold two big ones this weekend. So he's starting to pick up. So basketball is slowly picking up now. This is I when mean, it picks I, up, right? Get yeah. the All Star break in a month, you know. Get yep. uh, LeBron chasing the record. We're gonna yeah. start to see some separation. You'll have the, uh, you know, after the All Star break, you'll have, uh, you know, kind of the push towards the playoffs. Maxi had a good game yesterday yeah. against the Lakers. Hit some big buckets, you know, to to seal the win for them down the stretch. He looks like he's playing at a different speed. It's him, De'Aaron Fox. Know. They just play faster than everybody else. It's really crazy. Yeah, I'm just sure. I'm just. I'm still not sold on the team. I think they have great individual pieces but i haven't seen them tied it all together so let's see because maxi is playing a different type of game than the other two so he excel when sometimes Embiid is not in you know or harden is one of the big dogs is not in but i haven't seen them how it could really work when it's three of them at the end of the game so we'll see <laughs> i want to get to the westchester show but before we do yeah. that just to fun because people love hearing your thoughts on qbs Right. And we haven't seen Jalen Hurts play yet, but he got a gift that he gets to play the Giants now. You know, I mean, talk about the easiest yeah. road to the NFC championship game. I know the Giants looked OK, but I mean, it was a well, Vikings Mike. set maybe thought about that, too. But. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it's it's one of those things. Right. But the Giants always seem to beat the Vikings. It's kind of one of those historical mm -hmm. things. That they just find a way to do that. Um, but but. Hurts obviously still alive, but it's a great day to chat about you know quarterbacks about your inventory. You you have some Herbert stuff, you know. Oh, you a lot. Out, right? <laughs> Josh Allen was very close to being knocked out. Joe Burrow very close to being knocked out. You know, mm -hmm. we saw some trends from the Dolphins and from the Ravens. It's easy to say, hey, I'm going to do what the Ravens did. You don't yep. have the Ravens defense, but exactly. you know, you're sweating a little bit if you're someone who's holding those cards. Talk to me. Let's let's go down the you know go down the hierarchy of it. If you you have Herbert. So Give I'm going to be honest with you. I have um, a plan on Herbert. I didn't think oh, he was going to get knocked out yesterday. You know? <laughs> and I'm talking about my PSA order is not even back yet, but I was very excited with uh, my Herbert grades, obviously. So I plan on like selling at least like 20 to like 40,000 the next few weeks, you know. Herbert. So, yeah, Herbert. But obviously got that, got, you know, I went to bed like 27 <laughs> and then woke up at, 31 30 so it wasn't you know a good break but at some point you know i was my the last few show my goal was to buy trevor lawrence even though he's a little high but he's not high yep. so and even if i buy now you know and when it gets hot again if, if they did get knocked out i could always sell them but it's later. smart because you have so much herbert it's like a hedge for you. exactly yeah so basically now all i have to do is sell some of my trevor lawrence you know at because they are going higher than what it was. So I'm so, going to say this, and then I want to hear what you say. I would sell every Trevor Lawrence card I have right now. Yep. My Jalen Hurts take, my Aaron Judge take. Mm -hmm. I would sell every Trevor Lawrence card that I own today. Yep. Am I crazy? I will, no, you're not crazy. <laughs> uh, I will sell them too, because I think um, – but there's a but to it if you if you're patient. Mm -hmm. And you think, let's say he does get to the Super Bowl. I'm not saying he will. <laughs> if he does get to the Super Bowl and get three times what it's worth today, mm -hmm. in the next few weeks, I will sell them 100%. I will sell them now, some of them, and keep one or two, you know, that's like free. Like, that's always been my strategy. But if he gets to the Super Bowl, I will almost sell all of them. 
like not a single piece left, you know, because I think you could always rebuy them later. But I mean, think, think how close he was to not being as valuable at a halftime. Exactly. People were dumping, you know what I mean? So that's yeah. that's my thing because all his games that he's been winning is in the last quarter and last two minute drill. So there's something going on still in the first few. Does that mean he can't follow a play that the coach is giving him? Or he's just good at two-minute, you know, reflex play and stuff like that. So we're trying to learn him still. And I think that was the only matchup that was there for him to win. And, you know, I don't think he wins another game. That's just me. Uh, that's why I would say to sell him now. Mm -hmm. um, my thought on him also, in addition to that, is – he may be a very, very good quarterback. That team has built up a very good defense. He's got some weapons around him. But for you to sell the card for more than what you get this week, mm -hmm. not only does he have to win this week, but he's got to go through the gauntlet yep. that's still left of it's either going to be you know, Mahomes beating, right? He's got to beat Mahomes or he's got to beat, you know, yes, we see that for each other, Josh road. Allen yes. and Burrow. Yep. I mean, he's, mm -hmm. you know, so, and he's not going anywhere. He's not going to the NFC anytime soon. So that's mm -hmm. going to be his fate for his, the, you know, during his prime here, during his mm -hmm. years where as a card collector, if you're buying now, you're expecting him to do big things this postseason yep. and beyond. He's still in the same conference as all of those guys. You know what I mean? Yes. So to get to a Super Bowl, he's got to, he's got to take out, well, look, Burrow did it last year. Right. Yeah, so he that, got that's what I'm saying. And, and people and, are like, oh, Burrow take a step back. But I actually think Burrow, I know they almost lost yeah. with, but I think Hudley played well yesterday, you know, yeah, not good enough in the end, but he he played, you know, more than I anticipated. So I, that so I, I did our whatnot show in the morning and I said mm -hmm. the Ravens plus nine was free money, but the best mm -hmm. bet was going to be betting the Bengals second half line because mm -hmm. the Bengals covered yep. their second half line 21 out of the last 24 games. <laughs> yep. They are very good, but Harbaugh would get the Bengals up in the beginning and play good mm -hmm. defense. They probably have a lead, and they did have a lead at halftime. And you get the Bengals at like minus four, minus five yep. at the half, and they covered eight. They covered the whole thing in the mm -hmm. second half. It's just kind of the way you expect that game to go. It's going to be <laughs> ugly. It's teams that knew each other. It's teams that, you know. Um, yeah, that's what happens when, you know, you played each other. Like, played each other so many times. Yeah. It's going to be a close game. It's not going to be a blowout. You know, that's yeah. just the it's going to be so um i like burrow of all the quarterbacks i think burrow Me too. Um, you know is the, is the most complete quarterback he's not flashy like mahomes you know he's not a you know he's not a a, a running back like josh allen you know he doesn't do any of those like you know he's not he's not a hundred on on as a mobile quarterback mm -hmm. he's not a hundred as a playmaker but he's a yeah. 90 on everything you know what i mean and, like there's nothing to me they haven't even drafted a good line and put a good line in front of them. Oh, the line's are terrible. And they got exactly. a couple injuries. The you know, whole yes. right side is So if this year they draft a little bit some of the linemen and do some trade, then, you know, I think they could go, you know, go to the playoff contender for the next few years. So, so we touched Herbert and we touched on T-Law. Those were the two big ones mm -hmm. that obviously I want to get on because they played against each other. Um, you know, just so that, you know, we could have some fun stuff. You have a head-to-head -head matchup now, a replay of the game that got canceled. Yep. You have now the Bengals are going to Buffalo mm -hmm. to play against uh, the Bills. So you can have Josh Allen against Joe Burrow. Does mm -hmm. the fact that, you know, it's them playing against each other for a chance to get to, you know, the championship game. And does it, does it, does it is that enough, right? That, you know. The drama is right? definitely there, but I won't say, oh, it's definitely Buffalo, you know, but they do have a chip because they want to like, you know take care of the guy the team that took out you know but it's not really like badly intentional he he's the one who created the scenario but i'm just saying it's it's just a lot of boiling point that you know we'll see what happens basically so from a but, card standpoint mm -hmm. right Only one of them can win but do you expect that the, the fact that they're you know playing against each other like now is not a time to have to dump either one of them even the one who loses like let's say oh, Burrow no. loses so talk I about. I don't care I'm not dumping any of those quarterbacks <laughs> I don't care if they lose you know <laughs> I mean this are probably and I'm putting Herbert in that I none of those guys I will dump after a loss so okay. I think those guys are the future of the league and you know and there's this maybe five guys I won't dump and those are those two are definitely not right you got Mahomes Allen Burrow yep. Herbert, Herbert maybe two you know. are making its way into that yeah. uh you know into that mix you know you got the NFC 
which is seems to be like the the older quarterbacks, Brady and Rodgers. <laughs> yeah. You know, like we'll we'll see what happens and there. That's but. the thing. It's like as a collector, not not as obviously you know, if you're a Brady fan, it's different. Or you know, you're rooting for the greatest, you know, ever to have a one more last hurrah. But for investment part, you know, you want. And it's like you want Brady to lose because, you know, the younger guy kind of takes over, you know, that sort of thing. But for the first I, time, I'm rooting for Brady. One, I don't like Dak Prescott and the Cowboys. And two, everyone's rooting against Brady. So I'm rooting for him. And I don't own a single Brady card. So it's not like, <laughs> oh, wow, I have to. I'm not, yep. you know, since the tuck rule, I've hated the man. But for, for the game against the Cowboys, which by the time you're listening to this, guys, I could look like an idiot yep. and Brady could have lost. Or I could look like a genius and Brady won because um, we're, we're recording this like hours before the game. You'll hear it after. Um but, yeah, I don't uh, care either one Brady. of them either. So, yeah. <laughs> so um, you know, we, we talk about that. We talk about the on the NFC side. So another guy I would say to sell now, and I want to hear your take on it, especially because of where you live, is I am not a buyer in Daniel Jones. I think you're at you've seen peak performance from him from that team. I think they were basically pretenders all year. We can get crucified cool. about this if if they do win the Super Bowl. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if he was if, if a New York quarterback wins the Super Bowl, forget about mm-hmm. it. The prices go insane. exactly. Mm-hmm. But I, I'm just not sold on. I, I'm a Giant fan. I went yeah. to like two games this year, and I I don't know how Daniel Jones wins. To be honest, with you. I mean, mobile he can move, he can run. He I mean, he's can move, but he could also make ten straight mistakes. <laughs> makes a lot yeah. of mistakes yes so to me it's just i i can't it can't be my type of franchise quarterback you know i'm so, with you but i tell I him this week part of his so i told siobhan this if he gets hot and get deep because i have a black one of one xrc auto wow look at that so it's a massive card but it's still like it, it's not a big card it's like four thousand right now you know yeah. but if he gets far you know it could cross 10k you know oh if he wins but this week definitely, definitely a sell yeah, Daniel yeah. Jones is just one person I, I would sell, but, you know, and I'm a giant. Right. <laughs> so give me, you know, before I let you go, because, you know, we try to keep these short. So two more questions. Number one, and I'm going to let you run. Tell me, you were there for two days in the Westchester show. Tell me about it. I mean, tell me about Pete Alonzo. Was that hysteria? Did people go nuts? Were there a lot of Alonzo jerseys and just a lot of kids? Tell me about the deal flow. Tell me about, you know, a, I mean, you already kind of talked about a deal you made about a trade, but if there was any crazy mm-hmm. deal, did anything cool come to the table? that you took in that you're like, wow, I didn't expect to see this at the show. Give me kind of like the rundown of the Westchester show. Um, The Westchester show was a balance. It's not a lot of a uh, big spender, but there was some. So sometimes all you need is a couple, you know. Uh, they bought basketball, how you end, like I said, Maxi, a couple of like Boro and T-Laws mm-hmm. and stuff like that. But um, there was a lot of people selling, but not like, you know, desperate selling. I mean, one of my customers, remember I told you last show, I bought some nice uh, Big Bang Theory set mm-hmm. non-sport. Yep. He dropped me a box of like two rows, right? And says, I want like a thousand bucks for it. And so he left and I paid him. And next thing you know, this box could be worth like 5K, you know? So I'm I'm like thinking of giving him another thousand just because he's a regular customer of mine, you know? So it's it's that good, the deal. Okay. All right. And people come, obviously you, you, you've set it up now and you're like, okay, you know, people are going to come see me there. You name it the whole deal. Yeah. Right? So, and then uh, the, the peak hysteria I thought was a little insane, but <laughs> it kind of kept it tame because they sold out right away before they the did. show yeah. even started. Show, they yeah. sold out. So a lot of people came and, like, it didn't make people come just in case, you know, like it's only like 300 tickets i think available or something yeah he was pretty pretty expensive too i mean yeah. you know i think 199 dollars was like entry level uh, signature for him and yeah, it was and the inscription is like another 100 yeah. you know inscription sold out right away so i and, saw that you know like just mm-hmm. the flats and stuff were were available but they yeah. sold out before the show which you know doesn't happen that often but yeah. i mean that's but a lot of money he was there to like almost nine o'clock signing so wow. Fanatics was there because he's signing everything for Fanatics at that show, not just the White Ch- yeah. Westchester stuff. Mm-hmm. It's, I mean, it's pretty cool. It's a good, good, good work if you can get it for a few hours. You know, there's a lot of signatures. Yeah. You know, you know well, see, like, that's the thing. You know, um, the promoter did tell me an interesting story about that. That um, so some of these guys, it's not easy to get a big guy to come to a show because they don't care about thirty thousand, fifty thousand. Mm-hmm. You know, but if you could get them to do a big signing, that all they have to do is spend six hours signing everything already and get paid 200,000, they might do that. 
Right. So I think, you know, you're going to see more of that coming, going to happen, you know, fanatics working with like local shows and shows promoter for that. So, I mean, especially also, I mean, someone like Pete, who clearly is a big name and doesn't, he's not hurting for money that 30 or 50, mm-hmm. dollars, but he's still on his rookie contract. Yeah. So, you know, he's not making 30. I mean, I think the, uh, look, I'll take his contract. I think he just got his first arbitration year. And I think his contract was like 14 and a half, but that's the first yeah. big deal that he's signed. I remember, you know, when he won the home run derby for the first time, I think he won more for the home run derby than, than his salary. Yep. Paid for the year and then donated it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so good guy. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm glad he gets every dollar that he can get for, you know. No, for he was definitely, I, I spoke to some people that kind of met him, you know, some kids, they're like, he's, he's nice. He's, he's smiling, you know, even though, you know, he didn't want to be there. <laughs> so, <laughs> but it was good. Well, with him sold out ahead of time, you didn't have to, you know, stock your table with Pete Alonzo autos. There are people that actually power. did sell out some, because uh, you know it's cheaper. You could yeah. get a Pete Alonzo autograph for like sixty bucks. You know, why spend hundred eighty dollars? You know, so one this, dad did convince his kid. You know, instead <laughs> of spending one eighty, I'll give you this card. So the kid bought it. You know, I mean, there is that right? Like, how about if it's one hundred eighty bucks? How about you buy a sixty dollar Alonzo and I give you a hundred dollars? Yeah. You could buy something else too. He's exactly. not even your favorite player. Buy two Alonzo, buy a rookie. So it, it, there is okay. it's something funny about that. But I mean, the value is also in meeting the guy, shaking his yeah. hand, yeah. saying hello, and, and that mm-hmm. kind of stuff, especially someone like that who doesn't do it that often. Yep. Um, you know, um, it's like the Sandlot kids when they show up at the thing and you get to have a catch with them. It's like, oh my God, I threw the baseball around with the Sandlot kids. It's it's more of like the, you know, You'll the always remember it, you know. Yeah. So that's cool stuff. So any any crazy deal flow besides the dad who convinced his son to buy the Pete Alonzo? Anybody walk up with a card and be like, oh, wow, a Game of Thrones auto. I got to have that for my PC. Anybody come in with anything crazy? Yeah, I told you, the whole box. Yeah. The whole box. All right, that's good. And I, how I, about how about you dealing something crazy? Like I anything got, that you – got two Jason Momoa autographs, dude. Oh, Kyle oh, Drogo. Those Drogo. are massive. So. Yeah, that's good. Those what about from like, – from, you know. Something that was on your table that you brought that you didn't think had any chance of moving, and you're like, "Oh wow, that moved." I didn't think I would sell Maxi this weekend. To be honest with you, mm-hmm. I was buying those for the next March Philly show, closer to the playoffs, and you know. Yeah. Uh, but I sold your Maxi card. Sorry about that. Look what we did. Uh, you sold the Maxi. Even the phone was shocked. It fell <laughs> off. It fell off the stand. All right. Not so the, then the last. Okay. You know, gold auto Maxi. So. Nice. The last question, because we just hit the half hour mark and we like to keep these short and, you know, everybody always gets, we get great feedback on these. Everybody loves you. So what's the next show and how do you prepare for that? Is it any different than what we're doing now? So the next show is Culture Collision. Uh, I'm flying, obviously. Um, This is only their second show for me, at least, you know, it's their second show, but but it's their second for, um, you know, for, for me. Are you playing basketball? No, so they have a voting. So I told them that Siobhan can't make it. So they're like, oh, okay, we're not going to promote Siobhan then. But, you know, uh, Jess won, I think, for the East and Mama Breaks for the West. So I think it's going to be a good competition and stuff like that. But, uh, yeah. I- I'm so you bringing sneakers? Are you bringing, how do you, how do you, how do you prepare differently for this show? Uh, I'm bringing some, so I have Chewy with me, you know, I'm bringing some modern stuff. So it's almost more, it's it's like baseball is picking up, but you don't want to sell all your good baseball because it's not at the peak price. March is like the peak price for baseball. So I'm going to be bringing some baseball, but it's mostly basketball. They love their Atlanta Hawks there. You know, um, there's nothing Falcons really that I need to sell. So. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, who we saw Cordero <laughs> Patterson cards, maybe. I mean, he, he was good. He's a pro bowler. So that yeah. show is the last weekend in January, right? That's a the, the but there's also a show in New York at that weekend that I didn't know that I was planning by Causeway. So if you do want to, you know, oh, like the Boston is at Boston, right? Oh no, uh, so yeah. Foxwoods. Mm-hmm. Um, Marino just sent me yep. a, a message and said, "Hey, I'm thinking about staying over, yeah, at the casino <laughs> for the card show." So That's I have more autographs too, I think. Yeah, they usually run a good show. So I've never been. I've never been to Foxwoods actually. Oh, okay. You want not, I've this close? I've never been to Foxwoods ever. Um, so culture collision. That there's a causeway. That Foxwood show at the same time. And even though you are local here, you're doing the culture collision show. Talk to me about the mindset of that. Um, Didn't even know about the other one. <laughs> about causeway is they don't. 
promote their show very early. They don't put the dates out very early. And I like to uh, set all my flights early, getting everything booked. I plan at least three months ahead. So I, I just I just planned ahead for this. So it's more that I, I already plan for and support Ralph, you know, for Culture Collision and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. There you go. I mean, listen, that Culture Collision, I think Andrew went to it last year and played basketball and lost. Yeah. And, you know, it was very, very, he was very upset. Um, Is he? I don't know. We're going to have to ask him. But it works out perfectly because – We'll do another episode right after you get back, and we'll hear because that's two weeks from now. We'll hear about uh, you know what was what was there. Do you anticipate it being a little more flippers than what you've seen in the last couple here? A little more like you know fast pace. Those are the type of show that has more like um, it's more like flippers and it's and it's not a bad thing. That's why I don't like to use that word, but you know, oh, it's, it's good. You know, what I mean, yeah, it it's a part of us. You know, some are dealers, some are flippers, some are you know whatever collectors. A little bit of both, like a hybrid of both. Exactly. The only, the only difference, I mean, is how you prepare, and that's what we talk about here. And whoever's throwing the show better make sure there's good Wi-Fi, because yeah. people are on their phones. You know, Wi-Fi planes did very good this weekend. Was provide free Wi-Fi for everyone. So we decided, you know, a customer like, oh, I can't search, and then I gave them the Wi-Fi, and it's all good, so they could all search. <laughs> there you go. There's a value to that, right? I mean, these are the, yeah. these are the things. If you can't give us carpet, give us Wi-Fi. There was. Mean? So, which is good. <laughs> wow, a little carpet, Wi-Fi. I mean, this is, yep. you know, this is a hobby for old men like myself. You know, we want to be inclusive. You know, you're gonna lose oh. the old men. Right now, it's <laughs> right now it's a young kids' hobby. They run around with their phones and their comps. They don't care about carpet. But to keep me in with my binders. By the <laughs> way, did you see that post that I made? Well, definitely. <laughs> Uh, they have like trade night that lasts till like two, three o'clock in the morning. Which yeah, like, I gotta go to sleep. Exactly. The post that I made about the binders and people filling in the stuff on their shows, they uh, every comment on it is those people are gonna die. That's what every <laughs> the comments like. Those people, those people are dead. They're dead soon. I'm like, wow. You know, like we have a lot of actuaries. We have a lot of like you know life insurance people in the comments who know exactly when people are gonna die. It's yep. pretty crazy. Oh, I did find out something that was funny. Ooh, nice. Here we go. Have a white plane show yesterday. At the end of the show, there's two people that was walking around asking that they work for at the this what's the name the uh, Adam Sandler movie and the two brothers, the producers. Okay. So they're looking for who they want to cast that's going to be in the movie and stuff like that. And the funny part is, I had a customer who's like a model-looking kid. And they asked him only. <laughs> and he's not even that active in the hobby, but it's so funny that I'm like thinking. And they walk around literally just looking for good looking people. Yeah, there you go. So they stop with you. No, 100%. they 100 percent You no, Chewy. No. <laughs> just a young kid. But the funny part is the young kid said, Why are you interviewing me? You need to talk to her. <laughs> and true. so funny. I felt bad for that person who was like, I don't know, she's an agent looking for, you know, talent. She has to force to like ask me question because the kid is like, you have to ask her to first if you're going to ask me question. There you go. There, the people know. People know. People know who knows the stuff. And guys, that's another episode of uh, Black Jade and Wolf Uncaged. The next time we come back we're going to get to the recap of Culture Collision. Yep. Uh, you know, maybe I'll make a first trip. What's up? Prepping for Bur Burbank after that. So. And then Burbank. Wow, that's Super Bowl weekend. Any any reservations or hesitations about going there Super Bowl weekend? Uh, believe me, I'm not very happy about it because I didn't know when I booked it. <laughs> it was Super Bowl? Uh, I, I usually like to have friends over for Super Bowl party and stuff like that. So we'll see. Hopefully it's worth it. I'm sure it will be. I'm sure it will be. Everybody spoke really highly of it last year. But uh, that'll be a good episode. We'll, we'll hear about how Culture Collision was and the prep for Burbank. Yep. Thank you very much. Everybody yep. loves this. Love having you on.